What up, YouTube? It's your boy, and I'm back with another video. I'm in a pretty good mood right now, but this this topic that I'm about to go over with y'all is something I know I struggled with in the past, and I know other people most definitely did, and um, quite honestly won't know what to do after, you know? So today's topic is what to do after a breakup, right? And I'm going to, you know, as usual, I wrote down what I had to write down. I'm going to let you know what I mean and break down everything. I have how many steps? around seven steps that will help you and implement and if you implement it in your life trust me your life will get better bro i'm sorry okay so i put i know things are hard now but things will get better i know that it seems like maybe you can't live live without that person but things happen for a reason you might feel unmotivated to do your day-to-day -day tasks but you must push through that's literally what discipline is all about no matter what happens you must keep going Realize that your partner is feeling the same way if you were in a healthy relationship. If you were getting cheated on and this, that, and the third, it's better. It's for, it's for the better that bitch left or that dude went, you know? It's for the better. But I will tell you now that the worst thing you can do is mourn over her, her or slash him, and lose yourself in the process. It's not going to help. <laughs> Sitting down, eating bad foods, and getting overweight will not help the cause. Using drugs or alcohol won't help either. This is something that I had struggled with. It will make you numb and ease the pain, but that is only temporary. Swear to God. Once you stop all the emotions you have for that person, once you stop, all the emotions you have for that person will only hit you harder than it was before. Since now you are running, since you were running away from your feelings, and know this, time is truly the one in control because over the weeks and months, your emotions won't feel as strong as they once were. So know that. Lastly, unfortunate situations like breakups and even deaths are usually a bad thing. I'll teach you how to take advantage of these unfortunate situations in life and turn them into a good situation, right? So that leads into the steps, right? So that's what I wanted to write, bro. I love to write, get my mind and my heart truly into what I put it in, right? Because off the head, sometimes I can't really truly say what I want to say, right? So rule number one, hang out with friends. Being with friends will only help the cause. Take your mind away from her slash him and have a good time, right? If you're being with friends, right? You know when you're with friends, bro. You're with your your homies. You're with your homegirls, whatever. You're having a good time. You're doing other shit. You might be doing some crazy shit, whatever, bro. But you're having a good time. These people will help you... Excuse me. Will help take your mind off of everything and get you into a better state of mind. So that you're maybe not thinking about this person as much. Because when I went through my breakup, I know that I was thinking about that person, like, all day. Like, it was hard. So, those brief moments that you have that you're with your friends and slash family, if you have family that you fuck with and shit, um, when you were at those brief moments, it feels way better and you feel just so relaxed and back to your normal self when you're with your friends or family and you're having a good time, right? So, be with friends. Don't always be alone. Being alone could sometimes fuck people up because a lot of people don't know how to be alone. So sometimes maybe you want to be more out with people, but you must learn how to be alone. And I'll get into that. Number two, implement journaling, meditation and reading. Now, these there's these three rules that I have to go about for you guys. That's one of my out of the top three. That's the third. Like I just wrote it off here. So I have to just go by order. Journaling, meditation, and reading alone helped my life. Y'all don't even know, bro. Journaling, just like I was in a phase where I it was I'll get into a video of my life story one day, but it was just so much shit going on. Shit that you guys probably wouldn't believe. And journaling helped ease help little little. I'll tell you this right now, little ease a lot of the pain, bro. It helped just get my mind off of things and just write down how I truly feel when I'm fucking angry or when I'm sad and i just feel crazy and i just feel more of the times it was more i'm angry that i write down and i just feel so much better after writing like a page of what um is going on or what's happening in this situ certain situation that made me feel like this right and then it gets you to know to know yourself what ticks you off and this that and things that you have to work on right two meditation now this is something journaling i might not do every day but meditation is a must for me bro 10 minutes a day will help ease everything. Like how I said with your friends, if you're with your friends, those emotions and those moments that you have with them that take your mind off of that person, that's the same thing with meditation, right? Meditation, you might not 
get your mind off that person. If you're really thinking about that person 24-7, right? Because that's how I'd be. I know how I'd be. Meditation will definitely help you. Um, I do it for at least, I do it 10 minutes a day. Well, not 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, two times, you know, in half. Once when I wake up, once before I go to bed. And that just helps ease it. Because when you're really thinking about this person 24-7, you're going to be thinking about them even while you're meditating. You have your eyes closed. You're going like this and breathing in, breathing out. But once you keep thinking about this person, you breathe in and exhale. You just feel so much better. And you will feel after 10 minutes, especially like after 10 minutes, right? Build up. If you can't, if your t uh, attention span is so low that you can't do three minutes even, just sitting there breathing and focusing, then build up to, you have to build it up from three to four to five to 10. And once you reach 10 minutes of meditation, you realize like, yo, you're good. And it just helps. Trust me, bro. Please do meditation if you're really just fucked up and you you have so much stress and anxiety because all the stress that you have of thinking of this person that they're doing this or maybe even, you know, the, everybody thinks different. But when you're thinking about them doing other this or she's with another guy or this, that, and the third, it helps relieve your stress. Trust me, right? So, and thir the third rule, bro, this changed my life as well as reading. First off, I'm sorry, it's hot as fuck. Like, I don't know where this sun just came out of nowhere, but basically reading just helped me. I, 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 I can't even speak. Reading makes me so happy. It's weird, right? It's, it's really weird because I wasn't a kid that if I told myself like two, three years ago, Patrick, that you will be reading right now as a 19 year old man. He'd be like, yeah, you're fucking pranking, bro. Like, because I wasn't one of those, you know, smart. I, I was a smart kid, but I wasn't a kid that's just school type dude. I was a sports video game type dude. That's who I was. And reading just helped me a lot because when you read books, bro, it takes your mind off of shit. And you're, you're like into like, like, uh, you're, you're fantasizing or you're thinking about like the situation book. If you like, for instance, if you read a fiction book. And that shit's about dinosaurs and you're in this arcade or just some bullshit. You'll be thinking about whatever situation that person was in. And quite honestly, I read books about for money to help benefit me for money. Um, and I, I read books um, about basically money, how to make more money, how to manage money, this, that, and the third. Um, and I, I'll make a separate video of books that you guys should read, but definitely that I have read. I'm going to make a video of, of books that I have read that you guys must read. And number one book right now that I've been reading is The Art of Seduction. I, I haven't felt no way about this book. Like, um, It's by the same author that is that made The 48 Laws of Power. It, he makes a lot of books about just um, like The 48 Laws of Power is just laws that you live by. Like there's certain rules and shit that you should obey by and, you know, shit like that and live by so that's a great book just for overall health in real life like just to make yourself better right but then there's the art of seduction and it helps you analyze and pinpoint which person is this type of person and it's like a lot of separate of like pinpoints of certain people i can say if you read the book i think i'm the charismatic i'm the charismatic type shit i'm the person um who will walk in a room and just light the room like, kind of the star mixed with the charismatic, especially the person I am right now. Not to say, like, a sound like, you know, bias or just, like, like I'm high and mighty. But I feel like that's who I am. But I suggest reading the book. It has a lot of, of stories from ancient times of how things were and how things are and how things are today. And how you could implement it from even the fucking 1841 BC, BC to 2022 right now. You feel me? So... The Art of Seduction, read it. But reading it overall, just read over anything, you know? And implement other hobbies like sports, going for walks, drawing. I don't know you. I don't know what makes you feel good. Just do whatever makes you feel good. And it might not feel the same because you're missing this person. But trust me, over time, you're going to get better at what you do. And it'll feel good. Trust me. Um, Like the gym, there was no way. I, was, I didn't give a fuck if I was with this girl or if motherfucking aliens came to this world bro i was going to the gym if i was sad happy mad depressed unmotivated i'm going to the gym straight like that three now this pay attention chicken wings this is the number one thing that you must do the number one thing three use her slash him as fuel 
This is the... All right, let me just read what I put. This is the number one thing you must do. Use her for another source of motivation. This is a whole nother power you must know about. Using her as fuel to complete your goals and get better as, at every aspect in your life. Every aspect. Getting more money, getting a better body, better looks, better transformation, better mental and physical health will only help you at the end. Make her realize what she missed out on. Make it a healthy competition. Use her to better yourself. All right? So, I'm not going to lie. It's fucking hot. But listen, this is the number one thing that I already knew just off of who I am. I wasn't that type of person who was depressed and sad, but I'm going to sit in a room and listen to a little peep, sad music, and eat donuts all day and watch movies all day. I wasn't that person. There was no way I could be that person. I wanted low-key shit on that person. I want that person to know that she fucked up. Like, if she looks at me from a year now, that's a whole different Patrick. That, that he's that dude. You have to. That's how you build your character to become that guy. You use this so, sort of fire that you have. You're thinking about this person all day, right? So you might as well use that into your weightlifting. If I used it into my weightlifting, right? I was bench pressing a certain weight, and then over time, man, I'm just like, <clears throat> I get mad. And, you know, by those last few reps, if I'm at eight reps, and then I think about her for a second, I use that power and I'm like, yo, I got to push it. And then I do like two more. And it's a whole different source of power that you come from your inside and you bring it out. It's like an energy and you you put it towards whatever. If, you, if you're thinking about her and you're broke and she mentioned that you were a broke boy or some shit and you want to get your money up, use that as a source of fire to push you to go better. You don't want to do the opposite. This is what people do. They tend to do the opposite, right? If you're, if, if the girl's like makes it the same competition that you're doing you guys have to be neck and neck and then eventually pass her i don't give a fuck you have to keep doing things that makes you as a better person like like i said i read i started reading i started meditating i didn't know about this shit before i didn't know nothing about this shit i started meditating getting my mental health right i didn't know what depression was until i went through it i didn't know what anxiety was until a couple like a year ago i didn't know nothing about that shit bro i just knew i was dealing with it but i just Never knew about it. It's just things that you have to go through that'll build you as a better character. If somebody died, make them feel as if they died for a reason. That they're shining light over you, and you're they see you getting better in life instead of getting more sad and more bad and just everything decreasing in your life, right? So use this. I'm telling you this right now. Use this as the the key source of motivation to keep you going, bro. If you don't feel like going to the boxing gym or so whatever. I, I remember I sometimes I didn't want to go to the boxing gym or even maybe the gym. I think of her. Yeah, but we got to go smooth. Like, no, nah. like she can't win this competition with me. I'm sorry. I'll make it that competition because no, bro. Right? And also, if you, you know, she she goes back to your Instagram three to four or five, six months later and see that you're doing good. Mm. They're going to be right back to you. And that's up to you if you like to go back or forth or whatever. It's up to you, right? So you bettering yourself is only going to help you. And that person will realize what they missed out on. Four. Rule number four. Eat clean. Let me just put it like this. Eating garbage will make you feel disgusting. While eating clean will will make you feel good. As, as simple as that, do what makes you feel good. If you're eating garbage and you're a fat fuck and you're a loser, basically, she left you because you're a loser. Change. Like, why wouldn't you change? Get a better hairstyle. Get, get your drip up. Like... You know, do something, lose weight, eat good so that you can feel good. Like, I don't understand a lot of those blue pill people. Like, the blue pill, just the people who accept who they are, that they're a fat fucking loser and they're going to continue playing the video games and being a, a loser. I don't understand you people that much. And I made a, I'm going to make a separate video on the blue pill and red pill and which side you should be on. So, eating clean will just help you overall with your health. You don't even have to lift weights. You, if you just eat clean, you'll feel better about yourself. And that's just what it is, right? God damn, like, what the fuck? Hold on. Fuck. <laughs> Five. Now, this is the top. This is the second thing. Number one, like I said, my mention, my top three rules that I put. One is definitely use her as fuel. Two was, is now what I'm saying. And three was the implementing the journaling and everything like that. So this is the second most important thing, right? Because over time, you're going to feel a certain way about the person. If you don't 
truly do what I'm about to tell you, you're never going to get over this person. Five, you must forgive. This is, this is a must even if you get cheated on. Sounds crazy, but listen. Once you truly forgive someone, you lose all, all emotions, emotional ties for that person. Even if you see her with another guy or kissing another guy, it won't phase you. It won't phase you, bro. You just be like, okay, like, cool, go crazy. Let buckets go crazy. Like, it's just a whole nother thing. Once you forgive that person, not saying you have to be friends, not even saying that you have to go to that person, like, I forgive you for what you did. Because that's kind of, you know, tacky to me. Like, you know, if that bitch did you dirty, it's fuck that bitch, you feel me? But at the same time, once you forgive her, it's not like it's fuck her. But, like, you know, you see her as a regular person. Like, you just see her as, like, like somebody, like, if she come up to talk to you or whatever. And, you know, once you forgive her, it's just, like, that's the bro. But, like, that's not your friend. Me, personally, if I get cheated on, I don't want to be surrounded by you. I'll keep it moving. Hey, hey, hey and bye. Hi and bye. You know, I'm out smooth. Like, I'm not going to be making conversations, especially if you cheated on me, man. Fuck that bitch. But at the same time, once you for truly forgive that person... You let go of all the ties, bro. Like, think about if somebody, like, you, you forgive, like, somebody just, that did you something wrong when you were younger. Remember, you just forget about those feelings that you had about that person, right? After a while, after, I'm not saying, you know, after the first month, after the first few weeks, you're just going to be over. Because it took me, like, probably six months to get over it. But I didn't realize until I did this. You must forgive. Even if, you, with my situation, bro, I'm not going to lie, I was the dickhead. I was the one who fucked up everything. So I had to forgive myself. And that's probably one of the worst pains because I didn't know. I realized I know I was a dickhead. I'm the one who fucked up everything. But you have to forgive yourself even, you know, for being that asshole. That, that's not you no more. So once you forgive yourself and you forgive that person, you're good, bro. You're off the list. She's, you're fine, right? So now this is all not in order, right? So I, that's number five. Number six, if you're depressed, right? Because once you get... You're most likely going to be depressed, sad, not in the best mood, right? I say, if you're depressed in the room, get the fuck outside in the real world. Being in a dark room, listening to sad music won't help at all. Always being busy doing something in... Always be busy doing something and you won't have to have time to think about the person, right? For me personally, I'm a type of dude that wants... I feel my life is accomplished when I'm outside doing something, when I'm being productive. So if I'm being productive, I don't have time, bro, if like... My boss is telling me to do this, or if, if I'm working, my boss is telling me to do these tasks and everything. I don't have time to think about her. If I'm in the gym, I'm pushing shit. You use her as fuel. That's when you think about her. But it's not all day where you're just sitting in the room thinking about this person, looking at the fucking ceiling, listening to little peep who wants to kill himself. You feel me? Do the opposite. Do something that you're outside, you know, going for walks, hanging out with other people and listening to good music. I, you know, I used to listen to a lot of, no, I didn't listen to sad music because I'm, I just, it's not me, but I listen to a lot of gangster rap and everything. And realize that it will lead me into a bad, like, a, a negative um, energy, right? A lower state of mind, lower energy. And then when I listen to, like, Bad Bunny, that's my guy, my energy rise. Like, I'm really happier. Like, I'm singing his songs. I'm just lit, right? So find the music that fits you. Music could be used as a tool or something that will fucking fuck you over just by what you listen to. Remember, if you're listening to sad music, my, bro, how are you going to feel? Sad, right? So if you're listening to some happy music, how are you going to feel? Happy. It's as simple as this. But it's very overlooked. So please listen to me, bro. I'm spitting nothing but facts, bro. Right? So now seventh. This is the last thing, right? This is the last tip that I got for y'all. Social media. I've been made a video about social media. Social media is a piece of shit. I hate it. I'm even addicted to it. And I have to break off of it. But I'll tell you this. Once I was not with this person and this, that, they weren't seeing me on social media. I'm not going to be on social media, this, that. That's just who I wasn't. I had to take a break, right? So let me get off. I put social media. Get off of social media. Stalking their page won't help. When you make people miss you, you hold a lot of power. Also, being on the app won't help you. You're looking at other people who are better than you, and that will make you feel insecure. I already made a whole separate video if you want to go look at the, the video. Um, I, I share a lot of my pinpoints. I'll probably make a whole other video because I don't think that video was as good. But being on social media is not going to help you, bro. I, I see people, you know, there's people on social media that... that um. That I might even say that look better than me, that are, you know, stronger than me, bigger than me and everything. And it makes you feel insecure in a way. But also you could use it to push you to go harder. But more times than not, it'll make you insecure and you won't feel it yourself. You won't feel like the same old person that you were. And to social media in general, it's a time where you'll be on that shit all day. If you go into your fucking phone, put the um, 
what how much time you spend on that shit you're gonna see how much time you really spend on this so much time that's wasted that you could go towards your goals and stay driven to what you have to do instead of being on the app not making any money from an app that you're on for six hours but nothing you but just using it for straight dopamine and it's just not what it is and oh shit i just thought of another tip number eight go on semen retention i should have put that shit in there. i didn't think about it semen retention is you're not fucking you're not jerking off you're not watching porn porn is bad for you i'll make a whole nother video about porn but semen retention alone will help get your testosterone up, make you feel more like a man, give you more energy, more strive to go for what you have to do. And it'll make you feel less emotional. Like, cause when you're, you're jerking off all day and this, that, you just feel like a, more like a bitch and straight up like that. And when you stop, you feel, and you hold your seed for a month, two months, you feel more like a man. You'll see the benefits of what they're talking about. So go search up semen retention. And I'll also make another video on that book. Semen retention is definitely something that you have to do. It'll make you stay driven to your goals. Um, you won't have excuses. You will just feel like you have to do what you got to do and you have the energy. And that's something a lot of men lack because that's all they want to do is just watch porn. And that's so like gay to me because I don't even like, honestly, it's a hard addiction, but I don't do this anymore. I don't, it, it's, I'm not watching another man fuck a bitch. I want to fuck, you know, I want to be that guy. Maybe in the video is fucking a bitch and you're, you, you feel me? Like I'd rather be fucking a bitch than jerking off. You feel me? You know, from a dude clapping, you know, I'm not. I'd rather be that guy clapping, basically. So, semen retention is just something that you must have. You must be on, like, no fap. I mean, here and there, if you want to go fuck with some shorties, yeah, but that's fine. But um, holding in your seed have a lot of de uh, benefits, right? And another thing I can say is also just take time away from women. Really work on yourself. All of these tips are made to work on yourself and make yourself a whole better person. Quite honestly, I wasn't fucking with too much women like that after, you know? I really wasn't, and for now, I'm cool, and I'm big on, like, grind, and, like, the attention I'm getting from women outside, like, right now, it's, like, the most it's ever been, because I truly worked on myself, and I had this aura about me that I'm that guy, so, at the end of the day, you want to be that guy, that dude, like, who's just, like, that's him, like, if she sees you in person again, she's gonna be tweaking, like, yo, that's him, type shit, you feel me, like, and that was my ultimate goal. And I feel as if I accomplished it and I am him and there's just nobody better than me. I'm not, irre I'm, ir I'm not irreplaceable, bro. Like I'm not something you could just replace. I am that guy. If you missed out on me, that's tough. You feel me? So it's like, that's the type of attitude I had towards it. And I just want you overall, you guys just to, I know how hard it is, bro. I truly do, man. I know how hard it is. And I just want y'all to relate that maybe I could relate to me and just, you know, maybe follow, really follow the steps that I implemented and take time and time off of women and stop seeking bitches. And I, I took a good time off of that, bro. I wasn't trying to fuck with the, the hoes like that, bro. I really wasn't. And I took time off of that and I'm just doing what I have to do. And I just want to get, you know, do my goals and everything that I have to do in life that makes me feel complete. And that's when you're at your highest state, bro. I'm telling you. So stay yourself, stay 300. And whatever y'all do in life, trust me, I believe in y'all, bro.